Hi everybody, it's Miss Lori and Laud the Lamb and Luna. She's wearing her Halloween collar because it's Halloween week. It is also week eight of Celebrate Wonder. We were just sitting here telling some jokes. Yes, yes we were, weren't we? Yeah, you and Luna were just really joking it up between the two of them. It was pretty funny. So, Laud says he's got a joke for us. Are you ready? He's got to tell it to me first. Well, I don't know. Oh, I should ask them? Okay. Why are skeletons so hard to annoy? Do you know? Luna? Anybody? Hmm. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good, Lod. He said skeletons are so hard to annoy because nothing gets under their skin. <laughs> Get it? They don't have any they don't have any skin. What are they you all doing today? Well, we're just telling jokes. You're telling jokes? We are. It's fun to laugh. It's Halloween week. I yeah. love jokes. Oh, can I hear a joke? Um, Luna, you have hmm. a joke for me? Okay. Let's see. She could just whisper in my ear. Go ahead. Luna? Yeah, no. Oh, Laud? Laud, yeah. Okay. I don't know, Laud. Why? What did the He's zero say to the eight? What did the zero say to the eight? Ha <laughs> <laughs> Nice belt. <laughs> That's very funny. Thank you, Luna. I'm Pastor Meredith, our lead pastor at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and welcome to Celebrate Wonder. We're so glad you're here. <laughs> now we get to laugh together today. That is part of what we're talking about. It's very fun and very exciting. We want to remind you that if you want to be a part of Celebrate Wonder, get the kit at home and you haven't received those, please let us know in the church office and we'll get those to you. And uh, But we're really glad to be able to have this time with you here today to laugh particularly and to learn our Bible story and sing our song and do all the things. Are you guys ready to go do that? Yeah. Thanks for the jokes, Log. You're just <laughs> really very funny. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's go. Hi, everybody. Vlad and I are back, and it's time for our wonder table time. And the first thing that we always do is we light the candle, not the lamb. Light the, remember, I do this. Light the candle, not the lamb. There we go. Okay, we have all of our things. So, this week, we're on week eight. I was wondering... What makes you laugh? I'm trying to think. Well, earlier, Laud and Luna were making me laugh. They were telling jokes. Yeah, they like jokes. Also, my husband, my kids oftentimes make me laugh. The dogs, things on TV. Sometimes things that just go on in my own head make me laugh. How about you? And who, we just talked about who makes us laugh. A lot of times our family, our friends, comedians, movies, yeah, yeah. Your friends at the barnyard? Yeah, of course. So, that brings me to another quest question. Have you ever lost faith and why? We've talked about, in small talk on Sundays, about losing faith and then sometimes things just kind of feel like they're falling apart. Yeah, I think this might be a good time for us to pray about that a little bit before we go further. So this is a repeat after me prayer. Okay, here we go. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Thank you for giving me the gift of laughter. Thank you for giving me the gift of laughter. Amen. Amen. Now, how do you respond when something completely unexpected happens? Let's think about that for a minute, because a lot of times maybe that's sometimes when we might lose our faith a little bit, when something totally unexpected happens. Hey there, 
like hey. that. That is totally unexpected. Yeah. Surprise! I'm here. Hi, Lot. Hi, Laurie. Hello. What are you guys up to? Well, we're talking about our faith and laughter. Mm. And when unexpected things happen, sometimes they're good unexpected things. Sometimes we don't see them as good unexpected things. Sure. Well, that kind of reminds me of our Bible story that's for today. Now, you remember, we've been following along with Abraham and Sarah and how God has promised to take them to a brand new place to live. And they've had faith and they've followed and been on the long journey that God has wanted them to do. Mm -hmm. And God has also promised to Abraham and Sarah to make a large family from them. Remember, as numerous as there are stars in the sky. We talked about that last week. Now, one of the things that happens is God lets Sarah and Abraham know that they're going to have a baby. They don't have any babies, and they're really old, it says in the Bible. Like over a hundred years old. Like old. Now, when God tells Abraham and Sarah this, Sarah laughs. But not <laughs> like, oh, that's so exciting, laugh. Like, oh, you've got to be kidding me, God. Laugh. Sarah laughs. But then you know what happens? That's right. Sarah and Abraham have a baby, Isaac. That's why we have our baby sucker. Thank you for that, Laud. They have a baby, and Sarah laughs again, that this time with such joy over what has happened, that God has, of course, fulfilled God's promises to them, and it makes them so happy, and she laughs aloud. She even names their baby Isaac, which means laughter. I know, that's kind of amazing. And they are filled with such joy and laughter. So sometimes unexpected surprises can make us just laugh with joy, right? Yes, it does. Yes, indeed they mm -hmm. do. I'm going to put our bottle back here. I want to play with our Wonder Cube. Can I roll our oh, Wonder Cube? Yeah. So remember, you have your Wonder Cube at home. It's in your kit if you just got one and need to put that together. But... Um, this gives us some questions to wonder about. So I'm going to roll. I'll have to see what it says. Mine says, I wonder, what is the most important part of the Bible story? Well, I think one of the most important parts, of course, is that, again, God does what God says God's going to do. God said, mm -hmm. Abraham and Sarah, I'm going to give you a baby and a family, and God does with Isaac. I think that's pretty important. What about you, Laurie? I agree. I think that's really important. Okay, Laurie, here. Ready? Hmm. What would you change about the Bible story? Yeah. I don't know that we should be changing the Bible story. But, I don't know, after having kids myself? <laughs> that face makes me laugh. I can't imagine having kids now. Like, babies. Like babies like right baby now. baby bottle babies. Mm. So that's really amazing. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. But I don't think I'd change it. You don't think you'd change no. it? No. Hmm. I think it might be fun if instead of having a boy, they had a girl. <gasps> I know. That might be kind of fun. I think it would be fun. Huh, different change. I think we'd still yeah. laugh. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Well, why don't we move on? We're about to have our Bible story video, so we hope that you'll come in really close and pay attention to that. And thanks for spending this time with us. See ya soon. <laughs> Hello, friends. It's Samuel. Do you remember how old Abraham and Sarah were? They were a hundred years old old. Whoa. They have been on a long journey of faith, believing in God's promises. They waited a long time to have a child, and they finally had a baby boy. His name was Isaac. They had been hoping to have a baby a lot sooner, but God makes promises happen according to God's time. What's so amazing about this story is that Abraham and Sarah waited and God's promise came true. They had faith to keep going, even when it seemed impossible. When Isaac was born, Sarah laughed. Maybe she laughed because she was happy. Maybe she laughed because this news was unbelievable. But Sarah's laughter was full of joy. Sarah had faith. 
and she finally got to see and experience God's promise right in front of her. Have you ever had faith or hope for something you really wanted? Was it hard? One year for my birthday, I really wanted to go to the park with my best friend, but it stormed all day and we couldn't go. I had waited all week for that day. And when it came, I was so disappointed we couldn't go. I was really sad. But the next day was sunny. I got to go to the park, and when I got there, all of my friends were there to surprise me, and we got to eat pizza. It wasn't the original plan, but it ended up being even better. Even though it was different and not what I planned, it still brought me joy. God answered Abraham and Sarah's prayer, but it looked way different than they imagined. Their journey of faith was long, but worth it because they had Isaac. Sometimes we won't get exactly what we want, but we can have faith that God is with us. We can still have hope even when it's hard. As we journey with faith, we can believe in God's promises and be patient to see what will come. Now, it's your turn to wonder. Hi again, everybody. So this is our craft time. And today we're talking about names. We know that Isaac's name that he got means laughter which I love. I love the meaning of that name. Now, all of our names that we have, they have a meaning too. Some of your moms and dads or grandparents or somebody close to you might have already told you at some point the meaning of your name, because a lot of times parents look those up before they give you your name. But if they didn't, now is a good time. You can very easily just go online and Google the meaning of your name. So I did that a little bit earlier and I Googled my name. Now, my name means tree. Not really what I was expecting, but I'm a tree. Okay, that's fine. So I moved on. I thought, well, I'm sure somebody has a better meaning of a name, maybe. So I th chose Pastor Meredith. And she does. Pastor Meredith's name means, let me look, it means great Lord. Yeah, so that's kind of fitting, right? Yeah, so then I thought, oh, what about Lon? What does his name mean? His name means praises. To praise, which I thought was really awesome. Yeah, mm hmm So in your baggie this week, you have some name tags, but there's no names on them. You're gonna make a name tag for yourself. Now I'm gonna make one for Laud, cause I think that'd be fun and he said he wanted one. So that's what we're gonna do. And you're going to write your name on it and you can decorate it however you want with your crayons or colored pencils. Today I'm gonna use marker because when I use those things, you can't see them. That is my grandfather clock in the background. Sorry about that. But we are going to use marker. And so I'm going to start by writing his name. And we spell his name L A U D. And you might get mom and dad to help you if you still need some help with that part. And then we're going to say, I'm going to write what his name means. It says, Praise. I'm going to put a smiley face here because he's always happy. But you can make lots of decorations on your name tag. And then you can even wear it. So I'm going to put it right here on his back. So we all know his name. And now he's happy. So. Give it a try. If you have siblings, you can do that. You can do your parents, yourself, but make your name tags. 
Find out what those names mean. And remember, even if you don't particularly like your name, you are still a child of God, and you're kind of named in that way. Bye, guys. Adults, it's time for your spiritual practice of this week, and it is an acrostic prayer with one of our favorite words for today, joy, J-O-Y. So we encourage you to use this prayer every day this week, maybe lots of times. The J stands for just as I am, O stands for opening up to the possibilities, and Y stands for yet to come. Because we believe that God has wonderful possibilities and things yet to come for us, just like for Abraham and Sarah. So let's pray that together. And maybe a way to do that, just a simple kind of meditative stance, maybe put your arms out straight, take a deep breath, and say after me, just as I am, opening up to the possibilities yet to come. I took a deep breath with each one of those. Oh, it felt good. I'm going to do it again. Just as I am, opening up to the possibilities yet to come. Amen. I invite you to use that prayer this week, adults, so that you too can be open to the joy and all of the possibilities that God has for you. Okay. All right, everybody, week eight is coming to an end. It's been a wonderful time with you. I hope you've had some laughter during this time. Don't forget, that's right, Wad. Don't forget your celebration chart. And don't forget that when we're done here, there's some music at the end. So stick around and enjoy that. That's what do you thing. think? I love it. Yeah. Well, and our spiritual practice for everybody this week is to sing one of our favorite songs. Oh, I've yes. got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. So we want you to sing it with us. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. And, uh, and enjoy it. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. Let's keep going. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. One more time. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. Great job singing with us, everybody. Yes. It's been a great week. Thank you so much. Remember, if uh, you want one of those activity kits from uh, Celebrate Wonder, just let us know in the church office. And remember to stick around here for our music video that is following right now. Have a great week, guys, and try and have a little bit of fun. Bye. Bye.
candy 